Have you tried to use the NavMesh agent and the NavMesh obstacle together on the same component? Have you received really troubling results while doing that? Do you still have the need to make agents carve the NavMesh whenever they're not moving? In this video, we're gonna look at exactly that, how to combine a NavMesh agent and a NavMesh obstacle on the same game object and make them work together as best we can using the Unity navigation system. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality. A really common problem that people have asked me questions about, I've seen on like the Unity forums and on Reddit a whole bunch of times, is how do I make a NavMesh agent and a NavMesh obstacle work together? Or how do I make a NavMesh agent act as an obstacle for another agent? Really recently I did a NavMesh agent obstacle avoidance in depth video, but this works a little bit differently because we're talking about nav mesh obstacles, not agents as obstacles for other agents which is kind of confusing because we're using obstacle both times. But what a nav mesh obstacle does is carves the nav mesh. And what I mean by that is a nav mesh obstacle, if we place that onto some component and put that onto the nav mesh, it carves the nav mesh if we have a little tick mark for carve selected. And that updates the nav mesh to prevent agents from walking there. Generally, these aren't baked into the nav mesh and maybe they can move and there's some other configurations that we can do so it'll only carve the nav mesh whenever they're stationary. And that's cool, but you can't have a NavMesh obstacle and a NavMesh agent on the same component at the same time because then they just kind of flicker all over the place. It's horrible. Don't do that. But sometimes you actually do want your NavMesh agent to act as an obstacle because in scenarios like what we're going to look at today, maybe a NavMesh agent is just sitting in the middle of a really narrow pathway. Another agent comes along, they can't get around it, and they're just stuck. So how do they get around that scenario? That's what we're gonna look at here, where we're gonna turn that nav mesh agent into an obstacle when they're stationary and still allow them to move later. The nav mesh obstacle has that built in where it can carve when stationary, but it doesn't give you any way to tell when that happens. And that's really a problem with using the nav mesh agent and the nav mesh obstacle together. And we're gonna look at how to address that today. Hey, and just really quick, I wanna give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you wanna help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash Academy. You can get your name up on the screen. You can get a voice shout out starting at the silver tier and some other cool perks. Special shout outs to Raphael and Andrew Bowen for being the silver tier supporters. I am so grateful. Thank you. In this scene, I have two nav mesh agents. This yellow one has this simple agent patrol that just makes them walk between a set of points that we've defined there as waypoints. So we'll see that this agent walks around the scene just between these four points where they'll walk between these two black cubes on either side, which is our narrow pathway. If I move the other agent in front, we'll see that they kind of fight each other a little bit and then get a little bit stuck. Eventually, the yellow one pushes the green one out of the way to continue on their waypoint path. If I increase the green agent's radius a little bit, we can actually get into a situation where neither agent can pass one another and they get stuck. The green agent's just barely pushing the yellow one. If we look at the obstacle avoidance, they both think that maybe they can go a little bit to the side, but there's walls in the way. This is where having that nav mesh obstacle and the nav mesh agent together can maybe help us out a little bit because once these agents get stuck, we can make them carve and repath around the other one. That's where I came up with this cleverly named script, the obstacle agent. Let's open up Visual Studio and start implementing that one. The first thing we'll do is add a require component, type of nav mesh agent, and type of nav mesh obstacle because we need both of these components for this to work correctly. We'll define references to both of those with private nav mesh agent agent and private nav mesh obstacle obstacle. At the very top, we'll define a private float serialized field carving time that we'll define to be 0.5 by default. Then we'll define a private float carving move threshold, set that to be 0.1 by default, and also serialize that field. Both of these are configurations that are set up on the nav mesh obstacle. We're configuring them here because we don't actually want to use the nav mesh obstacles configuration. We want to control the nav mesh obstacles configuration. We'll define also a private float last move time and a private vector three last position to help manage when we should carve. On awake, we'll assign agent to equal gate component nav mesh agent and obstacle to equal gate component nav mesh obstacle. We'll then set the obstacle to be enabled to be false. 
We'll set the obstacle carve only stationary to be false, and we will set obstacle.carving to be true. Since we're managing in this script whether the agent should or should not carve, we don't want the nav mesh obstacle to control whether it's carving when stationary or not. We want to always carve whenever it's enabled because we will be determining in this script that the nav mesh agent is stationary. And finally, we'll set the last position to be the transform.position. On update, we'll check if the vector three distance between the last position and the transform.position, so the current position, is greater than the carving move threshold. If it is, we'll set the last move time to be time.time .time and the last position to be transform.position. We're just checking if we move far enough and once we have, we're gonna update that, hey, we've moved far enough. This is the last time we moved and this is our last position. We'll also check if the last move time plus the carving time is less than time.time. .time. If this is the case, then we're gonna disable the nav mesh agent and enable the obstacle. Doing it in this order is important because the obstacle and the agent cannot be active at the same time. Otherwise, we'll get some really weird results. And we'll also get a warning log to the console. It's actually all we need to do an update, but this won't work exactly as we want because there's no way to get the agent to move again once they've hit this case. So what we're going to do is define a public void set destination that accepts a vector three position exactly like the nav mesh agent does. So instead of calling nav mesh agent dot set destination, we're going to need to call obstacle agent dot set destination because in here, what we'll do is first disable the nav mesh obstacle, set our last move time to be the time dot time, set the last position to be the current position. And then what I'm going to do, it might be a little bit surprising. We're going to start a coroutine called move agent that accepts the position. We'll define that as private I enumerator move agent agent that accepts the vector three position. And the first thing we're gonna do there is yield return null, which makes us wait to the next frame. Because whenever we do things with the nav mesh obstacle, it takes one extra frame before the nav mesh reflects that change. So if we don't wait for the next frame and we enable the nav mesh agent, we get the agent to kind of snap to the edge of where the obstacle was instead of moving smoothly. That's really all the code that we need for the obstacle agent, but because we have two other scripts here that are setting destinations, we need to update those to use the obstacle agent instead of the nav mesh agent. So we'll open up the player movement class. We'll make it require component type of obstacle agent. We'll change it from having a nav mesh agent to be an obstacle agent. And on awake, we'll get a reference to the agent from agent equals get component obstacle agent. This script is very simple, just lets us do left click to move. We first defined this in AI series part one. If you haven't checked that out, go back. There's a card up on the screen. You can go there if you don't understand how this works just from taking a look at it. If I open up the simple agent patrol, doing exactly the same thing anywhere that I was using a nav mesh agent, I'm referring to the obstacle agent now. This one I do keep the nav mesh agent because I'm using some checking on the agent. So I actually needed a reference to that nav mesh agent but anyway we're going to use the obstacle agent we'll use set destination there instead of the nav mesh agent set destination if we hop back to the unity editor i'll add the obstacle agent to both of these nav mesh agents and click play let's see what happens the patrolling agent starts out doing the exact same thing it was doing before just walking between these points if i do the same thing where i move the green agent in the way and I open up the scene view so we can see both the scene and the game at the same time. As long as my agent is moving, we'll see that the yellow agent starts to try to come through here. But once the agent starts carving the nav mesh, the agent automatically repaths around them. Something really interesting is that even though I have auto repath turned off, the nav mesh agent still automatically repaths. This appears to be a bug in Unity because we would expect that the agent would keep the same path that they have after their path has been invalidated if auto repath is turned to be false because that's what Unity tells us will happen. If I increase both of the nav mesh agent radiuses to be 0.6, again, so that way they can't walk past each other in this narrow pathway, I'll bring the agents together in this narrow pathway. They'll get stuck, again, because they're too fat to fit together, and one of the agents ends up carving, and the other agent can then walk by. I expected them to be a little bit better where the other agent would have to repath around, but if we adjust the radiuses a little bit more or adjust the carve width a little bit more, that would solve that problem. This still isn't the ideal solution that a lot of people are looking for because we can't have the agent carve the nav mesh while it's moving because we still can't have the nav mesh obstacle and the nav mesh agent active at the same time, which is what would be required to have the agent carve while moving. And as far as I can tell, there's not really a good way to do that using the Unity navigation system. But the new problem is our simple waypoint doesn't understand how to make this nav mesh agent start moving again after they become a nav mesh obstacle. And that's really the tricky part. There's so many different ways that you could possibly try to do this. You need to play around with some of the options to see which way feels the best in your game. I can give you a couple options to try out. You consider just waiting a couple seconds or a random duration and then re-enabling the nav mesh agent setting them to their old destination. If you do that, then eventually they'll probably figure it out. But that's the most naive solution, just really easy to implement and 
They're not going to be very smart, kind of zombie-like AI may be okay. If you want really realistic AI, that's probably not the best solution. You could do something where the agent ray casts around them to see, has the obstacle that's blocking my path moved yet? If they have, then maybe set the destination then, or maybe try to go to a different destination if you know, they can't figure it out. You can use NavMesh Calculate Path to see if the way that they can go now is the same way that they could have gone before, and if so, then that obstacle is moved and they can proceed. Those are just some of the options that might work for your game, but how your game plays and how it feels is really important. You should take some time playing with some different options to see which one of these, or a different one even, would impact your game feel and if it makes the most sense for you to implement that way or a different way. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.